All right, Mark here, cooking the books, bringing the info. So I want to talk about the difference between smart and intelligent. I kind of touched on it in the previous video, but I really want to kind of like just delve into a little bit more. The difference between smarts and intelligence. Uh, fundamentally, I think, again, this, this could be my opinion. This could be philosophical. It could be debated, I'm sure. But I think the difference between smarts and, and intelligence is this. A person who's smart is intelligent in a controlled environment i'm gonna say that again i think a person smarts is is being intelligent in a controlled environment and what that looks like is you're in an academic setting uh an educational institution a classroom uh where there's a professor so you have some kind of authority there is a it's a controlled environment right it's generally it's formal it's so you're it's even keeled it's balanced it's you know this stable. It's it, everything is 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 stabilized. So you, all of your faculties are able to process information, you know, fairly well, provided there's no mental issues, right? Uh, you're able to think critically. You're able to assess, to evaluate, to analyze, and to do deductive reasoning and inductive reasoning, and you can, you know, uh, predict possible outcomes based off the analysis of the data. That's smarts, right? You're able to to to, to study, be scholarly, and you're able to process that information, take tests, pass tests, get good grades, uh, read and retain information. I, I I define that as smarts. So I think smarts is intelligence in a controlled environment. Uh, so the context is important. Now here's what I think: intelligence. This is the difference between uh, smarts and intelligence. Intelligence is being smart in an uncontrolled environment, right? I'm going to say it again. Intelligence is being smart in an uncontrolled environment. And here's what that looks like. You are able to still be quick on your feet, uh, rational. You are able to uh, be, be critical and analytical. You're able to still function from the left brain. You're still able to use left brain cognition left brain cognitive faculties in high pressured environments in uncomfortable situations in real life practical here's let me give you some more explanation of what it looks like when you're in high school forget that let's go back when you're in junior high school no let's go back even further when you're in elementary school you do not have the burden of a bill when you are in junior high school, you do not have the pressure of a mortgage. You, when you're in high school, you do not have the cumbersome, uh, overwhelming, uh, crippling uh, mental paralysis of uh, insurance, whether it be life insurance, mortgage, house insurance, uh, car payments, car insurance. Uh, you do not have a, a, a overbearing supervisor that lives on your your neck, uh, breathing down your back. You do not have Uncle Sam uh, garnishing checks because you are in tax uh, You have tax liabilities. The point of the press. The point is you do not have the pressures of life weighing you down when you're in elementary, junior high, and high school. So your brain is able to process information, and it's on an incline. Right? Your brain, the trajectory of your brain is on an incline. But once you get out of high school, college, so on and so forth, and you go into the real world. And now you have to uh, pay bills. You have to worry about paying bills. You have to make sure, you know, certain uh, financial obligations are met. Now, you, you, uh, what happens is the brain starts to go on a decline, right? Uh, especially if you're not doing anything to keep learning. So if you're not increasing your, uh, if you're not activating your neurons, right? The neurons are the brain's processes. Neurons to the brain is what bits and bytes are to the computer. I'll say that again. The neurons in your brain are what bits and bytes are to the computers, right? So if, if, if you're not activating and constantly, you know, stimulating the neurons, just like there's something called the law of regression. Matter of fact, something even better. The second law of thermodynamics. It's not the first. I think it's the second. Yes, yeah, the second that talks about the universe tends to entropy. Entropy means to annihilate. Entropy means to destroy. Uh, we can simply say that our brain, if we're not activating the neurons and keeping them active, 
activate your neurons, think of it like exercising, right? If you're not exercising, but you're constantly consuming junk food and you're not watching your diet and you're constantly consuming and you're sitting down nine to five at work and you go, you're sitting in your car driving home, you go home, you're sitting. So you're sitting down 90, 80% of your day, but you're still consuming. What's going to happen, folks? You're going to gain weight, right? You're, you're, you're going to, you're going to, uh, develop a lot of fatty cells around your stomach, right? Uh, so the bottom line is, if you don't exercise your neurons, the same thing is going to happen, right? Your, constant, your brain is constantly being overwhelmed with the stressors, the stressors of life. And I just named some of them in this, a few seconds ago. All those stresses are going to clog, right? They're going to have a clogging effect on your neurons. They're going to jam up your neurons. Uh, so that's the second law of thermodynamics that talks about the universe ebbs, turns to entropy. And in this context, in this context, entropy would mean uh, uh, diminished capacity, right? Yeah. So you would, your, your brain after high school and if you didn't go to college or after college or whatever and if you're just doing your regular nine to five nothing's wrong with that no one's knocking if you're just working you're taking care of the bills you're taking care of your family that is all good and dandy that's great but as far as like uh doing anything to keep yourself your mental faculties sharp if you're not doing anything to keep your mental faculties sharp, and it doesn't necessarily mean studying. It could be uh, you, you learn to play a, a musical instrument that you didn't know how to play before. You're, you're taking up some kind of uh, uh, academic uh, hobby, right? It could be solving puzzles, you know, word puzzles, word games, whatever. Anything to keep the neurons active. If you're not doing anything to do that, then you're going to... Uh, start to decline and enter into what's called a diminished capacity. Diminished capacity just simply means that your brain is no longer on an incline. It's on a downcline trajectory. It's going down, spiraling downward trajectory. And that's the universe and uh, goes towards entropy. Second law of thermodynamics. Anything that's not sustained, maintained, or improved upon naturally decays, naturally dilapidates, right? Naturally breaks down. That's what that means. So you don't have to try to break down. You are naturally going to break down it's part of nature it's totally normal it's a normal function of nature right you will naturally break down that's every and anything okay so if that law is is which is a law that's constantly in effect that means you are naturally going to go on a downward trajectory in terms of your mental faculties if you're not doing anything to keep them sharp and iron sharp and if iron you're not doing anything to keep them you know improved advanced enhanced so Again, the difference between smarts and intelligence, I kind of veered off, but I still stayed in context, but veered off a little bit, is that intelligence is being able to practice smarts in a very uncomfortable situation. In real, practicing critical thinking in, in, in real life, high pressured environments, okay? Everybody can be book smart when you're sitting in, in, a, in a controlled room, right? And, and, and again, you're not worrying about, you're not dealing with the real pressures of life. Intelligence is being able to come out into the real world and still be quick-witted, okay? Be clever, uh, being able to, to be quick on your feet, to think things through thoroughly in spite of the difficulties, the crises. Intelligence is being smart in a crisis. That's like the best way I can put it. Intelligence is being smart in the midst of a crisis. Most people are not smart in crises. They lose it, okay? Uh, your right brain is responsible for emotion and intuition, right? Your left brain is responsible for critical, analytical, mathem mathematical, scientific thinking. So your left brain is more rational and reasonable. Your right brain is more emotional. Most people slip into the right brain thinking in times of crisis they get very emotional right and they don't think okay they just act out of instinct and impulse right and that's when a lot of mistakes are made a ton of mistakes are made a lot of regrets are accumulated during that time how many of us look back and say man i shouldn't have done that damn i wish i did this different if i could just go back if i could just turn back the hands of time well unfortunately we can't so uh, and, and again, I'm, this is not a, uh, a lecture. I'm not sitting up here pontificating, uh, brown note, brown beating on anyone because uh, let me, let me explain something. I am, okay? Uh, 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 what, what's the, What's that commercial back in the day when the hair club for men? He's like, I'm not just the president. I'm also a client. Something like that. Like, I'm, 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 I've been a victim of what I'm telling you guys about. Like, I've made so many mistakes, right? Emotional mistakes, right? Not thinking with, with the left brain and really being critical, analytical, and just, just going off of emotions, right? Making mistakes, emotional decisions, only to live to regret them and, and wishing I could go back and change them. But here's the beauty of it, folks. 
lessons, okay? Everything that happens in your life is a lesson. Every single problem in your life is intended to teach you something. It was sent for a purpose. Every problem that shows up in your life was sent. Keyword, sent. Where? From God, okay? It came from somewhere, someone. So every trial, tribulation, no matter what, how dark it is, it was sent into your life and it was a specific lesson you're supposed to get from it, a specific answer that's supposed to help you along the lines of evolution because we're all on a, a, a string of evolution. We're supposed to evolve. So yeah, a difference again, real quick, difference between intelligence and smart is intelligence is being uh, smart in the real world, being able to keep your wits together, uh, uh, poised, uh, keep a presence of mind, uh, especially in these pandemic times when a lot of people are, are, you know, having panic attacks and anxiety attacks. And it's all natural. I'm not knocking anybody. Right. It's all natural stuff to, to, to be a little, you know, shaky in times of uncertainties and high uncertainties, etc. cetera. But it, you got to remember, you're not natural. You're more than natural. Inside of you is the spirit of God, and the spirit of God ain't natural at all. It's supernatural. So, you you, you know the the, the 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 smarts again being in a controlled room, a control setting. Everybody can you know your emotions are in check. Your stomach is full, right? Uh, you, you don't have to worry about bills. You got your mom and dad. You got you know you got your family. So that's that's cool to be smart. That's smarts then a controlled environment. Intelligence again is being thrown out into the into the wolves. Right, being thrown to lions, tigers, and bears, uh, and still being able to think, you know, logically, rationally, calm to be to, to, to remain calm and calculated, and and to, to you know, that's the difference between intelligence and smarts. And I'm gonna I'm gonna leave with this last thing. I've been on Wall Street for 14 years, and and I've seen guys come into my field. They've passed their test. They got 90, 95 on the Series Seven, a very difficult test. I passed it with an 80. I've seen guys get it with 90s. And these same guys quit like a week later because they were smart, but they weren't intelligent. Okay? They were smart enough to get into the house, get into the business, but they weren't intelligent enough to stay in the business. Intelligence, a smart intelligence entails grit. Okay? Entails mean goes with, follows, something that follows. It entails this, it follows this. Intelligence entails grit. Okay? Uh, it, 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 it entails courage. It entails gumption. It, 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 it you know, it requires it, it, being smart is cool. It's good, but you got to have more than just smarts to survive out in the jungle, to survive out in the real world, you know, to, 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 to you got to know how, like the reason why these guys who got nineties on their series seven didn't last in the business because they were getting rejected a lot. There's a lot of rejection in my field of work. 90% of what I do is you're going to hear no's. No's is 90% of my business. 90% is no's. Maybe 95. Okay. I, I might be lowballing it. It might be 98 is, is no's, right? You're going to hear way more, way more no's than you hear yes. And I saw that the guys who were really, really smart, they were really, really, really smart. They didn't have the grit or the intelligence to understand that they have to know how to control their emotions, right? They were smart book wise, but they weren't intelligent to understand that you have to know how to control your emotions. You have to know how to regulate your feelings. You have to be intelligent enough to know how to take the no's and turn them backwards. And if you turn a no backwards, it spells on. You see what I'm saying? So I'm on my game, baby. As much nose as I hear, that just means I'm on. I'm on the right path. I'm on the right track. They, see, that's intelligence. That's not smarts. You got to be intelligent to know how to turn a no into a, a on. And an on just simply means you're on the right path. Eventually, if I stay on this road, I'm going to get to a yes. But that's intelligence. That's something that you learn out in the real world. That's not what they teach you in school. You see the difference? Smarts is what you learn in school. Intelligence is what you pick up off the streets. It's what you get out of the real world, what you get out of life. And if you can take the and if you can take all that life throws at you and turn it around for your good, for your benefit, from your disadvantage to your advantage, from your failure to your success, from your defeat to your win, from your from your your your, your loss to your victories, that's intelligence. A lot of people are not intelligence, folks. A lot of people are smart, but they're not intelligent. And it's sad because I talk to a lot of people now, my contemporaries, my age, and I can't even, I, I got to move away sometimes because I'm, it, you know, their ignorance hurts my, my, my intelligence. 
You know what I'm saying? Their ignorance is like crippling to my intelligence. So I got to I got to pull back. I'm intelligent to know that I got to love you from a distance because if I stay close enough, I might catch what you got. That shit is contagious and I don't want to catch that because it's, it's harmful to the psyche. Till next time, y'all know what I'm doing. Cooking books, bringing the info. Peace.